I am Larry Elder. My guest is Dr. Roger McGrath, historian and author. He's written a column called Slavery's Ironic Twist of Faith. It's up on LarryElder.com. Uh, Professor, you say that a look at the historical record shows that slavery actually developed as a consequence of malaria, a disease that came to the Americas from Africa. Uh, tell us about this. Well, that's right. Uh, malaria had been around in Equatorial West Africa for hundreds or perhaps thousands of years. And uh, the uh, local Africans there uh, gradually developed a, a certain degree of immunity from the disease, and that's because of the sickle cell. Now, all of us growing up probably only knew of the sickle cell in connection with sickle cell anemia, mm -hmm. uh, because the sickle cell does not carry enough iron, it, 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 but it also... Uh, the malaria uh, cells will not attach themselves to the sickle cell. And so they have a real difficult time establishing themselves in the blood of anybody with a sickle cell. And this meant that Africans, ironically, what saved them from uh, debilitation or dying from malaria in Africa, ensured they'd be a, a, a slave in the Americas. Because white indentured servants were dying in in the swampy lowlands of the uh, Atlantic, uh, southern Atlantic seaboard there, uh, Virginia, uh, South Carolina, and Georgia. Uh, but they, they began to notice that blacks were not. Now, they didn't know anything about the sickle cell. They just knew that whites were uh, terribly affected by malaria and blacks were not. And so gradually this changed the pattern of indentured uh, servitude in, in the South. Uh, I think it was 1680, I probably should have said earlier, there were about 3,000 black slaves in Virginia. But at the same time, there were about 15,000 white indentured servants. Um, and so if malaria hadn't existed, there probably wouldn't have been more than 300 black slaves at, the, at that time. And a black slavery would have been something of a novelty, or blacks themselves would have been something of a novelty. But because of the death toll that malaria took in those tidewater regions um, of, the, of the South, gradually the South shifted from white indentured servants we're willing to come in an abundance from the British Isles to, uh, to black slaves. And so the very thing that protected uh, blacks in Africa ensured they become slaves in the Tidewater regions of the South. Mm -hmm. And you can see this. Why weren't there great numbers of slaves in New York or Pennsylvania, right next door to Virginia? And Pennsylvania had some very uh, fertile tobacco-growing areas. Uh, especially in the Conestoga Valley, uh, just like Virginia. But it's, slavery is very limited there and, and very limited in New York and all those other areas. And so you see where it developed. It only developed where malaria ravaged the white population. You say that, uh, quote, far from being a white supremacist conspiracy to, to create a slaveocracy in the American colonies, the establishment of slavery in the colonies clearly had more to do with an ironic twist of epidemiological fate. Equatorial West Africans were genetically immune to the worst effects of malaria, while whites dropped like flies. End of quote. Professor, we only have about 45 seconds left. Well, I mean, everybody experienced this when, when foreign armies invaded, as in the American Revolution, but the chief surgeon for, for the uh, Hessian Regiment in the British Army wrote that Carolina was in the spring a paradise, in the summer a hell, and in the autumn a hospital. And this was because the soldiers in, in the coastal regions of South Carolina had uh, contracted malaria. And, and they, they simply were debilitated or died by the hundreds. Uh, as they moved inland. Uh, so th this was a, a critical factor of life. We're going to have to leave it there, Professor. La Slavery's ironic twist of fate is the piece. It's up on LarryElder.com, written by historian and author Dr. Roger D. McGrath. 
Roger, thank you again so much for, for, for coming on. I really do appreciate it when you come on and explain these things for us. Okay, thank you, Sage. You Have got a good it. Night.